Welcome everyone. In this, we're gonna see how we can create a Kubernetes cluster fully managed in Azure. So all you know that in Azure, we have a service called Azure Kubernetes Services or commonly known as AKS. So what this AKS is all about fully managed Kubernetes cluster for you readily available. And to be able to create this Kubernetes cluster, you just can run a simple command or you can go ahead and let's say um, create it from the portal. Now let's see what is the experience over here when you try to do it from the command line using Azure CLI. Now all you know that Azure CLI is a command line interface which is available for you to run from Windows, Mac and Linux or else you can also run it from your PowerShell. You can even run it from the website that shell.azure.com and that will launch the AZ CLI in the browser. So if you do not have, let's say, local admin rights to your local machine, you can still go ahead and use this Azure CLI from the command prompt. So what we have done is that we have configured the Azure CLI just to check the AZ CLI is installed. You just type the AZ and you get to see all these options available. That means the AZ CLI is kind of ready. Now to log into your uh, Azure subscription, you need to use AZ login, which I have already done. So it will guide me to this and then I can simply copy this URL and this will prompt me to log in using the same credential uh, for my Azure subscription and provide this code uh, as my second factor authentication. So I'm using headless server. So that's why this experience looks like if you run it from your Windows or Mac, it'll open the local um, browser and you do not need to provide this um, device coding. So let me just go ahead and run this and it's gonna go ahead and continue. And once you have that successfully done in your browser, you get to see the thing uh, ready. So you have this uh, logged in done. Now you need to do a few things. You need to first create a resource group if you haven't done that. So let's see how that experience looks like, creating a resource group. So what I can do, I can pretty much use a variable called GUG as my AKS RG. That's an indication of the resource group. Maybe I can wrap it around with a double quote so that no issue. And then I will be using a location to create a resource group because the location is being used only once. I'll rather not use it in a variable. So what I can do, I can say az group create and pass two values, two mandatory values, dash dash name or n, and then provide the name, which is this one. And then the dash dash location or dash L and provide East US. So it's gonna do, it's gonna go ahead and create a resource group in the East US region, that's done. So the step number one is done. Now I need to create a case cluster and to do create the AKS cluster, uh, you need the name of the cluster. So if I, uh, let's say, go ahead and give a name of the AKS cluster inside a variable called AKS, uh, reach you or demo AKS, that'll be the name of the AKS cluster. Now to use the AKS command, so you say AZ AKS and you say create. Now that's not gonna create anything because it's just not complete. So it gives you an option you can run to create the AKS cluster. So you see that there are a bunch of options available. So what I can do, I can say K create, I can follow this uh, help and then say A K A K S A K S create. And then you need to provide two things. One is the group. Uh, either you can say dash dash resource group and the group name and use the same resource group which you have created and the name of the AKS cluster, which is AKS, okay? And this gonna go ahead and say that, um, um, say that I'm gonna create AKS, so we need to use this AZ. So this gonna go ahead and start creating the AKS cluster. You can see that the process has been initiated and sooner this will go ahead and create the AKS cluster. So while it is going to get created, what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna show you a small 
whiteboard and to make you understand how this overall AKS fits into Azure perspective. Now, when you create an AKS cluster, what is happening behind the scene now, what happens is that Azure creates set of virtual machines. Now, if you consider a typical AKS setup, you have this control plane, right? And then you have multiple work worker nodes available where your pods and all other, other uh, Kubernetes objects gets created. Now, we didn't mention anything while we ran this script because we ran the minimalistic script, so it did not have many information. But you can also provide what would be the size of the VM, what, how many number of worker nodes you need, uh, etc. So what network you need know, to part, part of it. So what essentially is happening here is that Azure is going to create a virtual network, create a subnet, and create an address space, put all these VMs inside that uh, network, and make sure they get IP addresses. So they all will have some private IP addresses which they can interact with, and then things will be set up for us. So it's so easy in, in a sense, like if you have done Kubernetes administration, you know how, how long it takes to run this thing to make sure that Kubernetes is up and running. And all of these heavy works has been done by the, the automated system behind the scene. But if you can actually provide a lot more information while running this um, thing. So let me show you a couple of options we have in the in the Kubernetes cluster creation. So if you run azaks create and you use this help command, you will see the list of uh, options available in the azaks create and including some uh, help things. So let me go through the list one by one to understand what you need. So we provided name, we provided this to only do these two things. You can also associate this cluster with Azure Active Directory, make it fully secure with the Azure Active Directory IAM solution. And then you can also provide a couple of other things. For example, if you have um, any specific add-on to be enabled, you can enable the add-on while creating the cluster. We can also add these add-ons later point in time, which I'll probably cover in my upcoming videos, but you can have add-on either when you are creating the cluster or later point in time. You also have the generate SSH key option. So the generate SSH key will actually create the SSH key and uh, allow you to store it in, in the location you want to store. You have a couple of options about the load balancer. You can specify the location. I did not mention the location because by default, the resource group location will be taken care. Of. Uh, so it will be in the same location as my resource group if I do not mention anything. But if you want to, let's say, place your AKS cluster in some other geographic region supported by Azure, you can specify that location under this minus L option. You can also um, give the max pod, min count. These are all auto scalable node pools which means you can start with one and then grow up to 500. So something like that. So you can actually arrange a value from one to 100, not 500. So, but this is how you can uh, maximize the, the pool size, the worker node size. So as you grow your business, you deploy more and more pods, etc. You can actually expand your worker node pool uh, up to 100 node pools. And then you have got a couple of uh, options available. So what will be the base node count? So generally, by default, if you don't mention anything, it'll be default three. It's mentioned here over here. You will see that we'll have only three node pools created for us. So there are a bunch of other options available. You can explore them. Now, hopefully, this is created. So you can see that this is created. So my AKS cluster is created. How, now, the question is that how do I connect to this cluster once this is created? Now, just to see the AKS cluster, right? Um, you can actually give the resource group name. So, AZ AKS show. You can say show. And the name of the AKS cluster is that dollar AKS. That's the variable name we created. And the group is dollar G. And that will show the details of the AKS cluster. You can see that it's a lot of information in the screen which displays about this AKS cluster. Now, 
we are working in a local machine. It can be a laptop, it can be anything, right? Now, when you work in a local machine and you connect to this AKS cluster, uh, what you need to do is that you need to um, use the command line tool called kubectl, okay? So that's a commonly used command line tool, kubectl, and you can use the alias k equals to kubectl. We'll continue to use this alias k going forward um, and not the full uh, cube serial so that we can save some time while typing. Now to bring that context into your local machine, which means all the certificate and the login information, you can say that az aks get credentials. If you do that, shields, okay. And then pass on the name of the aks cluster that is aks group is, you always have to provide the group name. It'll get you the context into your local config file. Now to see, you show that, you see that a demo AKS context is available and this is probably the default context. Just to confirm, current context. You see the demo AKS is the current context, which means that if I say K okay, get nodes, it's gonna to point to that context and show me all the nodes which got created just now. So you can see that it just got created four minutes ago and then all things configured, so it's a pretty fresh one. Now, just to check whether I, I'm able to work on this um, AKS cluster, what I'll do, I will just simply run a pod. So I'll say K run pod one image nginx. If I run this simple command, the pod gets created just to say the pod is ready. It's saying container creating. I can just put it in watch mode and then it says that it's now running. So the container is now up and running inside the pod uh, and the image we are using is Nginx. So that means I am now able to create an AKS cluster in my Azure subscription and let me just switch back to the AKS cluster uh, command um, to show you, uh, to have a recap how that looks like, how simple that command looks like. So this is az AKS create minus G, that's the resource group name, minus N, that's the AKS cluster name, that's all. Everything else is default state, so you just have the AKS cluster ready. But if you want to really specify what is the size of the node you want to create, what kind of, let's say, um, virtual machine scale that you want to have. So all those details you can provide and you know a bunch of information you can also incorporate. You have your own network to associate this cluster to, you can do that. If you want to associate your Azure Active Directory for authentication, you can do that. So you have all those bunch of options, but we are not really worrying too much right now because we want to see the, the real thing working now. So the real thing is working, I'm able to now point my cube cuddle to this by using az aks get credentials so if you see the command which i ran late before so you see that i kind of let's say if i if i run this and then you see that the, one of the command i ran is az aks get credential to get the the required connection information to reach out to this cluster through my cube cuddle. And once I am able to do that, I run this um, current context just to make sure that it's pointing to that cluster, not anything else, because I continue to switch between clusters. So it is always good to check what is the cluster. But if you're doing it for the first time, and this is a brand new machine you are working on, then you will always be having only one context, but you can have multiple contexts. So if you see my uh, config get context, you will see that there are a bunch of other contexts I'm working on. So you can see the star indicating the default context. You can even delete the context. So there are a bunch of duty available. But after you are connected, you can just run this uh, cube cuttle run pod one that's the name of the pod and then the image nginx just to check the thing is working so now 
my AKS cluster is working fine. So what I'm able to do is that I'm able to create an AKS cluster, connect that AKS cluster and create a pod. Fairly simple, straightforward, no hassle, no admin activity required. With this, thank you very much. And I hope you will enjoy my upcoming videos on AKS.